Hi, this is Wynn Claybaugh. Welcome to my Best of Masters weekly audio blog for AmericanSalon.com. Next up is one of my favorite clips from the last 20 years of inspiring interviews from Masters Audio Club. So you went to beauty school, became a hairdresser, licensed hairdresser, and how'd you get involved with doing shows on Broadway? I had left touring, got my license, went back to touring for a couple of years. While I was in Florida, I was approached by a union representative who said, basically, we've heard a lot about you, we think you're really good, we'd like to induct you into the union. I said, look, you know, is there enough work in New York these days, is, or how are things going? And this is the mid-90s. Okay. And that was actually when theater in New York started booming again. He said, yes, that's why we need more union hairdressers. That's why we're actually out looking for people. I ended that tour and moved directly to Manhattan. And at that point in time, I hooked up with a gentleman named David Lawrence, who I consider to be one of you know, my better influences um, and helping me get into the business. Now talk to us about The Lion King. When did you get involved in that? Um, I was working on a production in New York called Dream with Leslie Ann Warren. And things were going well. Um, through my contacts in New York, um, someone recommended me, saying I'd probably be really good for the job because of my background with stitching and wardrobe and my hair background. So it was sort of like a, a job almost made for me. It actually combined all the talents that I had. Uh, Lion King is not a traditional hair show. It's basically mostly synthetic braided work, uh, a lot of found object sort of stitched headdress type stuff. It's not traditional roller set styling as we know it in the wig world. It was fun to see backstage all the different you know wigs and headpieces and and then to be in the audience and see, oh yeah, I saw that backstage and I saw that backstage. In a show like The Lion King, how many wigs are there? We originally started out with over 100 headpieces because that includes wigs and things that you would normally not call wigs. We went through some revisions through the second year and we're up at about 80 headpieces and that includes what plays every night on the principal players and then the three swings that back up each principal player. If somebody goes out in the middle of a show or somebody's out before the beginning of the show, they have to have their own equipment and own wigs, headpieces, etc. The Lion King started in what year? Uh, 1997. I started with them in May of 97. Okay, and share with us what is a typical day like for you in, in working with The Lion King? No day is typical. Anything can happen. And How about a typical week, then? Uh, How many shows <laughs> a week are you doing? We do eight shows a week. As a hairdresser, our union contract gives us a five-hour call, so we're in an hour and a half before the show starts. Hour before half is all about just getting everything ready, and just getting everything prepped. Um, that's restyling, any sort of repair work that needs to be done, unblocking everything, because if you have a lace front wig, there's a certain way it's taken care of, so it, it maintains its shape and actually will last. It also is time to get everything set up, put everything in place for where these changes are going to happen. And then half hour before showtime, you start getting everybody into their wigs, you start getting preps done, you start sending people down a deck so they're ready to go. At Curtain, which is standard 8 o'clock or 2 o'clock matinee, you're down on deck and you're running the show. As people come off, you're getting wigs off their heads. When you're quick changing, you're pulling wigs one wig off, putting another wig on. And our show runs roughly two and a half hours, and that's with the intermission. So you're downstairs just running around in what is sort of a cavernous like maze. Uh, I've trained a lot of swings, and they always have a problem with, where are we in the building? Right. Because the show actually operates on many levels. There's a stage level, the understage level, and then the cellar, as we call it. Yeah, that was, that was kind of cool for me to see that there's all those elevators underneath the stage and, and everything that comes from above and from the sides. And In fact, you told me if, if somebody's backstage and they don't know where to stand, they'll easily get run right over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I've been training swings or, or an understudy for a hair track, on many occasions, we've had people, unfortunately, watching the show. And it's like, you've got to get out of the way because they're coming off stage and they'll plow you down. Right. Because once it starts going, right. it has to continue going. Right. And many times, again, when I said it's never a normal day, it, you, know, you will always have a couple of people out, which means you've then got to replace what is normally worn. Sometimes it's attached to a puppet. Sometimes it's rigged into yet another piece. Um, and that all gets to be interesting. What's even more interesting is when somebody goes out in the beginning of a show. Uh, we had a young Simba who thought he was fine going into the show, and then at five minutes, 
wasn't feeling fine, and we had to actually strip him out of all of his costume and prep the other young Simba in what usually takes 45 minutes to an hour in roughly 10 minutes. Wow. So it suddenly becomes a hyperdrive, if you will. You've got to get it done. Mm-hmm.